اهدنا الصراط المستقيم. I think transformation definitely comes from people being curious about each other and starting to ask questions to one another. Whenever we we have something where we start to say you're the other, you're the other, you're the other, what happens is you get fearful of the other. Psst, psst, hey, what? Hey, dude, 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 hey, look at that guy. That guy right there, look at him. You know the guy wearing, come on, the guy wearing the thing, come on. He looks like, he looks, you know? Like, oh, you think, he looks like a terror. Shh, shy. Don't say it. Dude, how do you know? Because look at him, come on. The whole mission of the project is to sort of confront the things that are hindering peace in our communities and creating conflict. And so when we started to work on this pilot in New York City, the thing that emerged that was so, that was so prevalent was this whole idea of 9-11 and the barriers that have gone up. Before it was like some people saw me as strange, but they didn't really pay me any mind. Some people might have thought I was a nun. You know, after 9-11, it was like now I was like this Muslim. And there's something wrong with me. The TEA project is going to be a multi-stage, multi-stage project and this is the premiere of the pilot. So it's the very first thing we're really doing. We collected about 30 stories from individuals throughout the New York area about, about their experiences after 9-11 and how that's affected them. And now what we've done is created a piece, a theatrical performance piece. Towers fall, first one, then another. As steel meets glass, the whole world takes cover. A city in blazes, a city on fire. Broken in pieces, down to the wire. Crystal and I started um, doing the interviews in March, March beginning of March. Yeah. And we would do maybe like three, four a week. We did interviews where we had planned the interviews, and then we did interviews where we just went up to people on the street and asked them questions and see how they felt. We called them interviews, but they were much more conversations. They were much more, tell me who you are. Tell me what you care about, what matters to you. How have things changed since 9-11, if they have? And if they have, what decisions have you made then based on those changes? We gathered all that information, and then we started the writing process. Everything is based on the interviews. Some of it are direct quotes. Some of it, you know, we've combined mm -hmm. two interviews to make this one mm -hmm. character. Yeah. The bar scene is based off an actual bar competition I had in Florida with this conspiracy theorist. So, I mean, that there's like 10 people there, you know? So there's a combination of groups as well as individuals. Mm -hmm. Look, okay, let's look at the facts, all right? Mumbai, they get club bombs. And Spain, right? They, they get car bombs. And Tokyo gets subway bombs. And we get nothing. Yeah, but right? dude, why? Why? Because they've been planning for this, man. They just got the American people to elect a terrorist as its leader. That's why. There was a little bit of fear on my part. I thought, oh my God, you know, what if we have picket lines? What if we, if we get one little piece of this wrong? Um, you always want to walk the line between evoking and provoking. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. When he starts to move his head, exactly. he looks like a bobblehead. Yeah. I was talking to a friend of mine who happened to be Muslim, and I asked him if he knew anyone that uh, was enlisted in the army. Because, you know, my, my brother's enlisted in the army, but my brother is not um, Muslim, he's Catholic. So I wanted to get the perspective of a Muslim who'd enlisted and who'd actually done a tour. So this guy, he had a cousin who'd um, enlisted in the army. He'd done three tours in Iraq. Um, and the first time he did a repeat tour, he actually volunteered to do it. You just said you're going back. Tell me, you gotta say something. I have to. Uh, okay. They want you to, or they're making you. Which one is it? You don't make any sense. What if I want to go back? Look, the war isn't over, and I'm not going to sit here and watch it on the news. So what, I'm supposed to sit back and watch you go off there and die? No, you don't understand. What? What don't I understand? Did you want to go back to that hellhole? Did you want to go over there and kill innocent people? Because you know the people that are dying over there are not just the people that blew up those buildings. It's innocent people. Women and children are dying. Muslims, like you. I did wonder about a project about Muslims and non-Muslims um, with being run and produced by people who aren't Muslim or have any significant relationship to that. Um, but that wouldn't at all you know, prevent me from participating. I just wondered how it would turn out. And that was something that worried, that worried us. We definitely were like, what are people gonna think when they see this? These people doing a show about being Muslim and none of them 
are, are, are Muslim, what, what are people gonna think? So we, we were a little bit scared, a little bit worried. One day we sat around and we went through um, how we felt or how we've been judged in our life and things like that. And it was just really interesting to see like everyone, we all could relate to that one topic. Once we saw that, I think it just kind of clicked. Like we really are connected to this piece. Even if we may not be Muslim, we, we still have a connection to this because we are, we've all experienced this in our everyday lives. TEA stands for Theater Engagement and Action. I want TEA to be a vehicle that inspires curiosity in people. Because when people are curious, they ask questions. And when you actually ask a question and you're actually curious, you're not just asking pro forma, but you, you're, you really want to know, you hear something different. That's what this is about. Into my heart, look beyond the tears and true.